there was a driver that was unable to start. Am I correct when I said Just, that, Chris? Justin Evans didn't. Justin Evans. Yeah, because he had transmission, transmission issues. issues. So he left, tried to get the car fixed, couldn't get it fixed in time to come back. Okay, that leaves one car out of the main. Uh -huh. The next car in line, I think, should have been able to start scratch on the field, right. which would have been. There was, there was three of us that finished fifth in our, in our B mains. Right. Which was Joey Cannon, um, one of the seven cars from. Oh, it was uh, West. Seven. Uh, it was Chris West. Yes. Yeah, with seven the, w. yeah, with the white and yeah, white and green. No, it was a different car. Oh, Williamson. He was, he was in the race. Oh, Williamson, Williamson yeah, because Williamson, Williamson ran from the yeah. back, yeah. No, they were both already in the locked in the field. It was another number seven, I think, a black car. No. Oh, it uh, was the yellow car. Was it uh, yeah, yellow Pitch. car? Doug, uh, Doug Pitch. Pitch. Doug, Doug Pitch, Pitch. From, uh, from Banks, yes. Yes, yep. yes. Yeah. Um, and then it was me. You know, there was the three of us, and we're all right there. And and I was telling Chris, I was like, you know what? I've got the extra money to start these guys. Let's just do it. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. Let's just start us all. Let's see what we can do. Put us in the back. And um, he didn't want to start that many cars. Um, and see that to me, and it was kind of a last second deal. You know, it's well, like you were already you were already suited up. You were already in your car. Were in our cars. I mean, we ready were all to go. ready to go. I mean, I don't understand. I mean, it would have been a hundred dollars just to start. I mean, but there wouldn't there wouldn't have been an it to me. So there wouldn't have been that issue. So here's with the, here's the question three more you have cars. to ask if if track management decided to go with just one more car to fill the car that Evans. That'd leave two cars out. Right, but do you move the guy up that's got the fastest qualifying time? That's what they were thinking. Is that, that, I mean, that's how you'd have to do that, right? That, that makes sense to me. I would take, I'd look back at qualifying and say, okay, look, so the 24 was the faster of the three in qualifying. Joey Cannon was the fastest. <coughs> of the well, the as, as an example. But yeah. But so, so Cannon would have been the guy in the 11. Mm -hmm. and he would have had a shot at the money. Um, another guy that had a tough weekend. <laughs> I know, poor Joey. You know, and he's been one of those guys where he'll, he'll work on his car, work on his car, work on his car, and it gets fast, and then something happens. You know, it's just kind of one of those tough luck Racer's deals, luck. Yeah. A lot of us have it. <laughs> and if it wasn't for bad luck, sometimes you wouldn't have any. But, um, you know, the whole show, Chris, uh, what you accomplished was absolutely uh, never, never done before on the scale that you did in the short amount of time was uh awesome you know a three thousand dollar to win street stock show 100 bucks a start thousand for second this is something i think what you've done this last weekend um isn't uh you, you uh, <laughs> you've started a wildfire okay this is something i think is going to not just become an annual event i can see this as something that's going to be on a regular basis if this isn't if this isn't something that yeah literally isn't on the schedule, <coughs> I'll be very very surprised. Wall banger, well, here's all that stuff too is because this brought in, I you know I mean, you've been down at Willamette and stuff for you know thirty forty years. I've been down there since I've been a kid. I'm sure you know Chris has been down there forever. You know we all everybody in the studio here has been you know part of Willamette Speedway for you know with something besides our our new guest. Uh, you know it was his first time in, you know this weekend, but to to see the crowd and to see the reaction on what we're about to talk about, it, it, it was, to me, it, I mean, it still gives me goosebumps because to just be a part of what happened at Willamette Speedway makes my heart, makes me chill. Yeah, I, I, I get you. I'm getting the same thing here <laughs> because, you know, and for me, and we talked about it, you know, for me, it was it was a rough day. It was a day that, you it know, was a I look forward to that uh, I hate. You know, it was a three-year anniversary of my dad passing, and my dad – this is what's funny, because when it all started happening, what we're talking about here was, was the purse was at three thousand, and we got to talk. We I got to give him a shout out, Radiator Supply House. Radiator Supply House okay. is awesome. So here's the whole, here's how this, this whole thing started. This is how this started. So I've got we've got Chris in the Moxie Tower. We're doing an interview. Okay, we're, we're interviewing Chris, and we're talking about the race, and you know what's going to happen, and da, da 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 da. And, and Sandy comes walking in and says, "Hey, look." There's a peep, there's a group of people in here in VIP boxes four and five that want to bump up the purse. <laughs> I said, really? She's like, yeah. I said, Chris, follow me. Let's go. And he's looking at me like, what are we doing? He has no idea what's going on. Yeah, so okay. mind you, we're only we're still at three thousand to win and a thousand per second. So Chris and I go walking through the VIP and we walk up to the Radiator Supply House uh, in group in boxes four and five, mm -hmm. and we talk with the with the guys. And I said, well, who's who's the guy in charge of making this happen? They said, talk to the boss man. I said, all right, boss man. I said, what are we doing? Are you going to bump it up or what? What are we talking about? He says, $500, $3,500 the winner. 
gave you a check, gave us a check right well, there. Here's the thing about it. When he said it, I was looking at him. I turned, I looked at Chris, and the look on Chris's face was just like he just got <laughs> kicked in the in the boys. You know, it was like, what is going on here? He was just like his total look of, of just like confusion, like what? I mean, he couldn't believe it. So, but we, we he he, gives, listen, he hands Chris the check. But this is the cool part too: is why you're doing this. I announced what just happened, and the crowd just flipped. Oh yeah, just went. Are you kidding me? It, so, it was. It, you could feel the roar, and compared to what happens later, this is well, here, a one point two on the Richter scale. Here's the funny thing, because what happened next was we 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 took the, you got the five hundred dollar check mm-hmm. from Raiders Playhouse. We walked back down to the Moxie Tower. We get up in the Moxie Tower, and Sandy comes walking up and says, "Hey, look!" He hands me this this phone uh, uh, piece of paper. With I, I want to say, I want to say I know her name was Tracy. I want to say his name was Doug, and I might be wrong. It was either Doug or Chris, one of the two, something like that. Anyway, could have been Scott. I don't know. Anyway, she says this is from this couple from Crescent City. They want to add another hundred dollars to the winner, so now it's thirty six hundred dollars to win. She no longer walks out of the tower. Josh and I are standing there. I turn around. There's some dude standing there. I don't know the guy. You got the card. I gave it to you. I don't know his name. All I know, <laughs> here's what I know. I know he's from Las Vegas, Nevada. He and came up just for this race. He came up for this race. He, came, he heard about this, came up just for this race. So he shows up in the in the tower. I, I mean, I, I didn't even hear him walk up the stairs. No, I, I turned I around. Either. He's standing there, and he hands me his business card and 100 bucks. He goes, here's another $100 for the winner. For 3700 <laughs> So I was at 37 And I'm going, what in the heck? So we got down. Uh, well, was, you, lo- you looked at me. Chris says, well, I got to go. Man, I got to get. I got to get. Get back in right, my car. So he had to get and out. you're like, you know what, Josh, come here. And I'm like, what? And you're like, watch this. Let's go downstairs. Well, we went down to auction off some doors. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we did the doors. We did auction off, and then the money started. We got 350 bucks for for your door, Chris. We got I think 400 for Rob Mayas. Um, hood. Oh no. The hood of yeah, yeah, yeah. that was uh, break all's hood got break 150 hood, bucks. Yeah. Um, Joey Tanner's door got 150 bucks. Yeah. So while this is all going on, <laughs> somebody walks up. Oh, I'll tell you who it was. After that happened, it was Casey Vitale yeah. with Northwest Hobbies. Yeah, that's right. Casey Vitale yeah, you, walks yeah, you up and says, like, 100 bucks to the winner. And I'm going, oh, no. This is getting out of hand. I, I mean, I just – so while this is happening um, – We're at $3,800. Darren and, and Tracy. It was Darren, Darren and, and Tracy, Tracy. – from from Crescent City, we so. got we got to thank our uh, our producer uh, yeah. for for being on the ball with that one. So <laughs> after Casey hands you that hundred dollars, we're just announcers. Josh and I start looking at each other like, um, and then it was just complete chaos because we've got kids that are like five years old walking up with a dollar bill. Yeah. Here you go, and I put it in. I want to put it in, and it got to the point where Sandy and and. John Duty's wife Trisha, or they've got a bucket, and yeah. we're we're collecting <laughs> money and just well, filling this thing up. It was a hundred bucks here, fifty bucks there, twenty dollars here. Here's this another. this was the crazy part too. When you say that, is that we both had we had a mic in one hand, full of cash, and we had a we had a, our other hand we had full of cash. I couldn't hold any more money, <laughs> and as I started stepping <laughs> it, in my, I'm not kidding you. No, mind you, Chris is already back in the pits. He's not hearing none he, of this. Yeah, he has no idea this is going on. No, no idea. I, I heard you guys as I was driving back. I kept hearing it go up a hundred, a hundred. Well, this 100. the cool thing about it too is By that. The time I got to the pits, it was like 4,200. Like, oh, my <laughs> God, what is going on? <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> it was so crazy. But then, you know, going back to, um, you know, what I was talking about my dad. My, my dad, and this is, it was just so weird that this happened to happen on his his anniversary of his passing. My dad, um, he he was a big time, big time practical jokester. And he loved to gamble. But he didn't, you know, my dad wasn't the kind of guy that walk in and, and gamble five bucks in a, in a slot machine. My dad was, he was high stakes. You know, he, he loved that big money. He loved that thrill. And, and if he, if he lost a hundred thousand or 20,000, or if he won 200,000, which he had done down in <laughs> Vegas, and they was told not to come back to certain casinos, you know, that was his deal. It wasn't, you know, okay, give a hundred dollars to the winner and spread the rest out through the field. No, my dad would have done $5,000 of the winner. Let him, you know, that, that's that what it give was. Give these guys something to raise. That's a winner take all. That's, that's exactly right. how my dad would have done it. And I'm watching this, and everybody's going, and I'm asking people, where do you want to put the money? Put it to the winner. Put it to the winner. And I'm starting to think. Well, it was crazy, too, because people just come up, and it's out of nowhere, and they'd just be walking by. you think they'd be going down to the concession. All of a sudden, they bump into you and say, here, take this. And it'd be another $100, $200. I'm like, 
Bubba what the Hoekland. Hell? Bubba Hoekland walked up and dropped off a hundred dollar bill. Well, the cool thing about Bubba, you want to talk about Bubba? Listen, to it. <laughs> this man is this man is he's funny. responsible for so, a few hundred bucks that was raised. Yeah, he is. So we're sitting there. I think we're auctioning off his door. It was then, uh, it was it was Chris's door. Yeah. So we're sitting there and we're we're trying to we're trying to get everything raised. We started like seventy five or hundred, whatever. Started at fifty. Yeah, yeah, we did. Started at fifty. Right? So all of a sudden, I can't get nobody at my end to do nothing. Corey over here is like paying his whole crowd, you know, to 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 do everything because everybody's coming down. So I'm sitting there, I mean, all this time, all of a sudden, here comes Bubba, big dude. All of a sudden, he says, "Hey, what do I got to do?" He I says, said, "I said, well, you got to bump it up." He goes, "All right, hundred bucks." Corey's down there, hundred and fifty. He's over here, he's like, <laughs> two hundred bucks. I'm like, two hundred bucks. Well, now, no, because it went up, it went up to three hundred. Mm-hmm. It went up to three hundred, and Josh and I are like trying to, we're trying to get that extra fifty bucks to go to the MDA and and you know the. Dornbeckers. Dornbeckers. And finally, as we were getting ready to write it down at 300 and, and or that thing, somebody goes, I got 350. Well, <laughs> like, the co- sweet. So what happens next? <laughs> Josh comes walking back to me with a smile. I said, did Bubba get that door? He says, nope. I said, oh, I thought he got it. He says, nope. Bubba just looked at me and said, did my job. Did my job. Got <laughs> it up there. Said, <laughs> he gave, I, gave, nice. I got the bump because I got the bump on it. So. <laughs> With it was just kind of cool. I mean, it was just the whole night like that. With people donating and helping out, you know, the 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 purse to the Iron well, Giant. The it, it was it was crazy because any time that we came down from that tower, or, or we're up, we in didn't the tower, have to leave the tower. It was coming yeah. up to us. It, it, I mean, just people are like here, and, and it started out with the kids. Here, here's five, ten bucks, twenty dollars. Here, dollars. Here, I mean. And literally, that's where it started. As soon as the crowd saw all the kids start coming well, down, well, it started really when Casey Vitale from Northwest Hobby dropped off yep. hundred bucks. I said, he goes hundred bucks from Northwest Hobbies. He says, um, he goes, I don't want any recognition. He goes, yeah. put, it, put it towards the winner. <laughs> and I, you know, I caught, of course, I, I threw Casey's name out because that, that's a pretty cool thing to do. You know, oh, it's huge. Um, yeah, that was really cool, of Casey, to do that. Yeah, that was a neat deal. So to to watch it, and then after that, it was just like, I mean. Well, it was it, it just it, it was, was like, like a we were, flock of people. It was it was it was a mosh pit, and Josh uh-huh. and I were in the middle. I mean, uh, they were just kids. I was getting scared. <laughs> it was well when you sit there and and you have like half of the crowd come down because half the ca- half the crowd there's you know as, as kids or young adults or whatever, and we're underneath the tower. We're we're one. We're trying to to do the race at the same time. We're collecting money. So Corey would do a lap. I turn around, then I would do a lap, then Corey would do a lap, and we was... collect money. We had this Budweiser bucket. <laughs> That's literally what Thanks it was. Thanks to Just, Sandy and Trish. I don't right? know where they got it. It was but huge. It, it was, was overflowing. Cool. <laughs> it was overflowing. So it you, really was. Do you, does Does Chris want to say what the what the final the total was? Well, let's tell. What did you pay out for, to the winner that night? Well, the final payout was what fifty two fifty two sixty two fifty two sixty plus plus Kyle got fast time, which is another hundred fifty three sixty. And then he won another hundred for the um, win in the Roger tr- that the Roger that barbecue. Yeah, he won the heat, heat race. race. Fifty four sixty to the winner. Ain't that crazy? Yeah. Three thousand dollar to win advertised race, and he walks out with fifty four sixty. And couldn't buy us dinner. <laughs> but is but you think about it. Who had the money? Who had the bucket? His mom did. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she took that real quick. But you don't and you don't mess was, you don't mess with Miss Miss Debbie. Yeah, no knows. way. No. You know the coolest thing though is she I mean sense, Cindy. I think that's why those boys are so smart. <laughs> Realistically, <laughs> if you look at it, you know I mean it wasn't us that did it. It wasn't myself. It no, wasn't Corey. It wasn't Moxie. It wasn't like that. It was literally the fans at Willamette Speedway that night. That dedicated, you know, they're dedicated race fans. They're, they're huge. And when it comes into supporting just the racers, one, you know, what what is your what is your normal pay rate for for winning an A main in a street stock? It's one hundred bucks. Okay, so a hundred dollars. Okay, you're Willamette Speedway, the fastest. Uh, one third. One third mile. Okay, in the West Coast, fast. Okay, oh, now we're talking. We're talking nationally ranked. You know, World of Outlaws well, and stuff were just there yesterday. Well, okay, so this is the deal. Nationally ranked track. Some of the best drivers in the Northwest and all over the country race at Willamette Speedway for $100. Yeah. Just because they're street stock. I'm telling you what, $5,000, $5,400. This is the reason so why the fans <clears throat> at Willamette Speedway are, 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 are just precious. I mean, they're dedicated. I mean, really? I'm, I'm the third generation at Willamette Speedway. My son is the fourth generation now at Willamette Speedway. It, it's, it's that's just, what it is, and man. That's what it is. It's a family deal. I can't, but 
I know that, Chris, let's talk about it, because I know that on our side of the track, with what Josh and I had going on with the fans and the yeah, hype I and the hear excitement about the people and the, the electricity, pit. what was going on on the other side of the pit area with you guys? Because I know you kept hearing, oh, it's a pumped up 100 bucks. And I mean, w talk about what the, 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 the feeling in the pit area was. Um, everybody was, I don't know if they were super focused on their cars, but they're like wondering what the heck was going on over there. <laughs> what were you guys doing? Um, but like you guys said, the fans there are incredible. <coughs> they they made that whole. Sh